Hi there. Um, thanks for joining me for virtual session number three, and we're going to move from bonds, number bonds, into branching. We're going to have a few connections to our number bonds so you can see how that builds into branching, and then we'll have some example of branching with whole numbers and branching with fractions. So remember, core math strategies are based on place value properties and that relational understanding because that those particular um, strategies can really build and assist us with things that are more complex as we move into additional standards and ideas. Also today, we're really going to um, be reminded of the power of the commutative property or switching the order of the numbers and still ending up with the same sum, for example. And also that associative property of, you know, how can we decompose numbers and associate these numbers in different ways so that we get to those landmark or friendly numbers, okay? So once again, kindergarten uh, branching can be used for decomposing numbers less than or equal to 10 into pairs, okay? First grade, um, we can relate those three whole numbers in a way um, with branching. That can be utilized for that particular standard. Second grade and first grade as well. I, I think no matter what grade level we're working at, be it K4, branching can be a method that we can use a tool as we're solving problems for addition and subtraction within 100 in second grade, for example, um, using those strategies. Here you'll see it again, solving word problems, using the branching method as a strategy and a tool. Um, that really helps kids think about that relationship and the properties, okay? Fourth grade, solving word problems, um, using those four operations. Also, you know, in fourth grade, we are, um, one of our standards is using that standard algorithm to add and subtract. But keep in mind, it does say using a range of algorithms. What we don't want to do with our kids at fourth grade is say, you always have to use the standard algorithm. It's not what it's saying. Oftentimes, the standard algorithm is a great algorithm, a great strategy for larger numbers um, that are difficult for us to do in our head or to break apart in, you know, meaningful chunks. Um, however, there are other times where that standard algorithm is not going to be the most efficient way for us to solve that set of numbers and work with the, that problem. So keep in mind um, that branching will still be a, a strategy they have in their tool belt. And then, while wow, all that work we're doing with number bonds and branching in K3, 4, really lend itself to transferring that knowledge, that understanding of part, whole, and the properties into how we work with fractions. Now what you're going to see is the benchmarks, or those friendly numbers within fractions, is really one whole, one half. How can we decompose these fractions so that we can work with them and really think about their quantity. So this is going to be really powerful here. Okay, so connections to our number bonds. Just keep in mind that as we work with number bonds um, in those primary grades that we're seeing those number bonds both vertically and horizontally. Okay, because what you'll see here is, you know, maybe they see these number bonds with circles and with squares and they go horizontally for a while, but you'll see that it's really helpful for them to see them vertically as you can see as we work into branching. Um, we basically just get rid of those shapes and now we have just the numbers listed there, okay? So that's kind of a nice building block. Now remember, when we did some number bonds, I really want to remind you of the power of context. That is when any of these strategies are most powerful rather than working with those naked numbers. So here, students were just given the picture of two male lions and three female lions, for example, and they created a context and an equation. So for example, they might say, well, there were two male lions, three female lions, there were five lions altogether. Two plus three equals five, okay, and so forth. And really creating or contextualizing um, along with the tool that we're using is powerful. Here's another example. You could quickly gather a picture, either one that you take in your school environment or of things that are interesting to the students, and we can use number bonds to create context and engage in story problems, finding the missing add-in, seeing that relationship. Okay, here's an example of a classroom, perhaps. 
every day. Maybe you do hot lunch and cold lunch. Why not use those number bonds that we've been working on to create the context, solve the problems, have some math discussion. All right, so let's step into branching. Um, before we get started, you are welcome to just follow along with me. I'm going to do some sample problems. You can grab a piece of paper, um, do these with me, pause the video, whatever works for you. But if you'd like, um, the problem sequence I'm going to be doing is actually um, something you can print up if you like. Um, this is not intended to be handed out to students, but just a resource for you to learn how to proceed through branching strategies. So if you go to the tiny URL listed and go down to virtual session number three, you will see a link for branching practice, okay? All right, so you can go ahead and grab a piece of paper or your practice sheet and watch and then join me so that you can practice these strategies. Feel free to pause the video at any time, okay? So let's do our first example, so eight plus 17. Now, using the branching strategy, I just think about how can I decompose these numbers to make friendlier landmark numbers. So I'm going to think of 2 plus 15 being the same as, notice this looks kind of like an equal sign that's slanted, and then I go ahead and combine 8 and 2. So 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 15 equals 25. Now you might have kids that say, oh, I took 2 from the 17 and got 10, and then I added 15. This is a visual representation of that. Mm. Okay? You could also have your students represent this with equations of 8 plus 2 equals 10, and then 10 plus 15 equals 25. So you can set those parameters. Okay? Let's do another one. How about 9 plus 6. Now, you know, we used friendly or near 10s as a strategy, so I think branching can really show that, where here we think of this as 1 plus 5 is the same as 6, so 9 plus 6 is really the same as 10 plus 5. So you've probably done these with 10 frame cards or visuals, um, and now we can see it being a little bit more abstract here, okay? one way to decompose that. What we don't want to do is tell kids you have to branch it this way. Allow them to make sense of it and decompose it in a way that's friendly to them. Okay, let's take a look at 57 plus 9. Now I can choose to decompose either of these numbers, but I think I'm going to look at this as 1 plus 56 is the same as 57. Okay, so I have 56 plus 10 equals 66. Is it reasonable? No. Oh, 57 plus 10 would be 67, but it's one less, so 66. Yes, it is reasonable. Let's do 48 plus 34. Alright, so how can I think about this? I'm going to go ahead and actually do this a couple different ways. I'm going to think about this as 2 plus 32. Okay, getting to multiples of 10 um, is a very powerful strategy. And so here we have 50 plus 32 equals 82. So when in Common Core it's asking us to count from 10, add 10 mentally um, from any given number, subtract 10 from any given number, you can see how knowing your combinations of 10, be it 8 and 2 is 10, will get me to 50, it, that's critical in any of these efficient strategies, okay? Now another way we could look at 48 plus 34, and I'm going to go ahead and get a clean slate here, is we can always break apart by place value, okay? So keep in mind that decomposing by place value can be a very powerful strategy. So we could look at it as 40 plus 8, and 34 as 30 plus 40, and then here we have 70, 40 plus 30 is 70, plus 12 equals 82, okay? Now, sometimes what kids kind of do is they get shortcuts using this branching strategy. And they start doing something like this, where they go 40 plus 30 is 70, 
8 plus 4 is 12. All right? How powerful for them to be able to look at it, how it makes sense to them, okay? Let's take a look at the problem on page 2, 86 plus 199. All right, and notice that, you know, 199 is really close to a landmark number. So as you start doing branching with kids, being very intentional about the problems and the numbers that you start with is really important. So, of course, I could think of this as 85 plus 1. So here, 199 plus 1 is 200, plus 85 equals 285. Let's go ahead, I'm going to jump down to 27 plus 680. Reminding your kids about that commutative property, I can start with either number as I'm adding, okay? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and break this apart by 7 plus 20 equals 27, okay? And 680 plus 20 more equals 700 plus 7, or 707. Once again, knowing that 80 and 20, those friendly combinations of 10, is 100, gets me to the next 100, is critical, okay? Is it reasonable as I look at the quantities? It is, okay? Now, there's other ways we could have broken this number down, okay? But that was the one way that I chose to do that, okay? All right, hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope that was really helpful to you and you got a better idea of decomposing and the power of those properties of associative and commutative as we do decompose those numbers. Um, I wanna stop here and next time we come together, we're gonna go straight away into um, using branching with those other landmark numbers. Earlier today, um, one of the specific standards we related to was the standard in which we're adding and subtracting fractions, for example, and how we can use branching um, to help us with that. So um, we'll see you back next time, and thank you so much.